When we planned out this video, we intended to tell you that T-Track was a waste of money. We wanted to show you there is a much cheaper way to accomplish the same goal. Then we ran into a problem and had to reconsider everything. We've learned there's a time and place for T-Track, but you can still save a ton of money by getting rid of it everywhere else. Today, we'll be building a crosscut sled. We'll show you what went wrong, how we fixed it, and how you can save money on your next jig or fixture. Come join us on our adventure. Some of you may be wondering, why should I make a crosscut sled? Can't I buy one of those? You certainly could, but then you'd miss out on all the joy of building and following your dreams and- Yeah, but it's really about utility and money. True, but it's still a little bit about joy. The sleds that you can buy online are all pretty tiny, and most of them are pretty expensive considering what they offer. You can save some money and end up with a larger, more useful product by building it yourself. We used an earlier version of this sled to cut bevels on the edge of two foot by four foot panels for our headboard build a few years ago. Let's see you do that with one of those tiny crosscut sleds. You can also see that we used T-Track on our original crosscut sled, because that's what all the YouTubers told us to do. Turns out, there's a better way. Now, let's talk about T-Track. It's one of the most commonly used accessory systems on sleds and fixtures, and there are tons of different accessories designed to go into them. Not to mention that most T-Track will fit the heads of standard bolts, and so you can make your own custom accessories as well. Plus, it's so shiny, so pretty. Oh, sorry about that. So, if T-Track is so nice, why do we think it's a waste of money? Well, it mostly has to do with the cost. If you want to buy some T-Track from your friendly neighborhood woodworking supply store, you can expect to pay 50 to 60 cents for every inch of that track. Searching on Amazon, the cheapest options are closer to 20 cents per inch. For example, the cost of T-Track for our original crosscut sled was $40. Now, if you're just making one jig, this isn't so bad. But as you make more and more fixtures, this cost really adds up. What if I told you there is a way to save money with your very first jig? We first considered this after watching John from Lincoln Street rave about the match fit system. Well, maybe rave isn't the right word. Point is he liked it, and it seemed like a good option until we saw this. $45 for two small clamps or $90 for a basic set? It was clear that this system wasn't going to be a money saver. And it was extremely limited in accessories. I mean, maybe you can retrofit dovetail shaped blocks onto other accessories, but who has time for that? But then it hit us. Maybe someone sells a router bit that cuts the same T-slot profile that's used in T-Track. Well, it turns out that most people don't. Most of these T-slot bits only have a quarter inch opening and our T-Track accessories all have 5 16th thread Woodpeckers has one, but it's $70, and I promised you the cheapest option, dang it. Introducing the Yonico T-slot bit. This bit was only $14. That's cheaper than any single stick of T-Track from most stores. But that cheap price does come with a few drawbacks. Let us show you how to get the most out of this bit and how to avoid making the same mistakes we did. The first mistake we made is pretty easy to avoid. You see, this router bit claims that its vertical cutters can cut your T-slot in a single pass. In fact, reading the reviews, it sounds like several people did exactly that with no problem. The downside to cheap bits though, is that they may not be very consistent in their quality. Always do a test on a piece of scrap with a new router bit. When we first tried to cut a T-slot on a scrap piece in a single pass, we got a lot of tear out. The bit got pretty hot and it started to burn the wood. It was obvious that this bit was having to work really hard to cut the plywood. Luckily, this is pretty easy to fix. We just swapped to a quarter inch spiral straight bit to cut the first pass for the slot. This bit is a compression bit, so it leaves no tear out on the plywood, and thanks to our plunge router base, we can easily set both router bits to cut at the exact same depth. Now that most of the material has been removed from the center of the bit, we can reinstall our T-slot cutter and cut the rest of the profile it's immediately noticeable how much easier this cuts compared to the first attempt. What really surprised us though is how little tear out we got now. The slot cutter is still widening our quarter inch groove to a 3 8 inch groove, so we expected to still get tear out. 
but it performed much better than before. Before too long, we had five T-slots on our crosscut sled that fit perfectly on our 5 16 hold-down clamps and T-bolts. This $14 router bit has already saved us $24 worth of T-track. We were flying high, patting ourselves on the back, high-fiving, confident that we had made the right decision. Unfortunately, the next mistake we made is harder to avoid and had us rethinking our entire stance on T-Track. You see, the last piece that needed a T-slot cut into it is the back fence. Remember how we told you that our bit's vertical cutters weren't cutting very well and probably needed to be sharpened better? How we were expecting to still get tear out on the center of the slot? Yes? Well, as it turns out, we probably should have sharpened them because these cutters caused a lot of delamination in our plywood. Now, in hindsight, this is not the ideal grain orientation for a T-slot router bit to cut. We should have expected this to happen, but this is why we make these videos. We want to teach you all so that you don't repeat our mistakes. We probably could have mitigated this by sharpening the cutters or by cutting the full width of the slot with our straight bit first so that the vertical cutters of the T-slot bit were never engaged. Or we could have admitted that T-track really would have worked better on this fence than cutting a T-slot. So here's the lesson. T-track is expensive, but it's cheaper in some places than others. Use it sparingly. Router bits can be cheaper, but you get what you pay for. Keep your router bits sharp and pay attention to grain direction and plywood layer orientation. Don't rush. It's better to take multiple passes than to ruin your piece. And it's always better to make each cut on a test piece first to understand how your bits will perform in different orientations. Thanks for watching everyone! If you want more helpful content like this, then consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. That lets us know what kind of content you all want us to make more of in the future. Bye friends! And if you want to learn more about router bits or how we used our plunge base to set a consistent depth earlier, then be sure to check out our router guide video by clicking that image on the screen now. Thanks for watching. Bye friends.